Okay. So I started my PhD five months ago in computational oncology. And whenever I tell people, friends and family, what I'm doing, I either get two responses. So either people imagine that I'm doing data entry on Microsoft Excel, <laughs> or they ask me, hey, hasn't ChatGPT already taken over your profession? <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, that is how my history looks like. So I do rely on asking ChatGPT for a lot of answers. And one thing that I have learned by asking ChatGPT so many things is that now in my life I have developed this useless skill of being able to tell really good stories. So now I'm going to tell you a story. I want you all to imagine that we live in this beautiful, peaceful, serene world and we have a lot of beer, we have enough food, we dance around the bonfire every evening and since we can't call it Earth, we call it Perth. Very great. And we live here again, peace, harmony. And then one day, this scary, scarier than this, scary looking wizard appears and he sends us a really threatening message. Yeah, well, and then he disappears. So we do what anybody would do, getting to know somebody in this day and age, we stalk him on social media. So we find out his mood board, and it's starting to look really concerning, really suspicious. So we continue to stalk him, and we find him oversharing on social media. He seems to be telling us his entire plan which is that he has a cloning machine and he's cloning himself and he's creating his own army this way. So lo and behold, he appears on the battlefield on Perth and ready to fight us. So commences Battle of Perth 1. And we do our best. We try to take him out and we are able to defeat a really large part of his army. And he says, yeah, I need to withdraw. I need a new strategy. So we go back to stalking him on social media. And we find out that he has named himself the Clone King, very fancy. And he seems to have a new strategy for sure. So a month passes and he appears with his army looking a bit different and commences Battle of Perth 2. So again, we do our best. We try to take out the army. Again, we take out some part of it. And he says, we need to withdraw, I need to find a new strategy. And this continues on for a few battles, so on and so forth. And now we are at what? Battle of Perth 41, still fighting him. But we start noticing something, that after every battle, less and less clones are dying. So this time, we need a new strategy. So enter Karl-Heinz von Mainz. A very happy-go-lucky dude, again, drinks, uh, drinks beer, dances around the bonfire, but he can do a really good old wizard voice. So we take Carl the spy, we dress him up as the old clone king, and we send him to the clone king's cave. And Carl the spy finds out a lot. He finds out that the clone king is making clones by changing the settings of this cloning machine. So he goes into the settings and he says, I want my clones to be 99% me, but 1% random. And what this does is that he ends up creating all these different variations of, his, of himself, but with different skills and powers. And that's how he is able to fight us. He also studies after every single battle, for example here, he's like, yeah, the blue people died really fast, so I need to change the settings and I need to find better clones. So every battle has been making the clone king stronger. So Carl the Spy steals the new settings and for Battle of Perth 42, we are ready this time. And we give our all. And victory to us. So we are able to defeat the clone king, we destroy the clone machine, and Clone King takes off on his spaceship to another planet. 
and peace prevails on Perth. The end. But wait. Let's say the Clone King was actually smarter. For every single clone that he made, he gave every clone a cloning machine. And this, let's call him a sub-clone king. And each sub-clone king was now able to make his own combination of clones and have his own mini army. And eventually, with enough battles, Clone King would be able to find the right combination of settings to possibly even defeat people on Perth. So it's good that Clone King has escaped to a galaxy far, far away. But this is a concept that sounds a bit similar to what I study, that is cancer cells. The expectation of cancer cells is that they are a group of can cancer cells that are all similar to each other. But in reality, some tumors look like this. They are made of their own small clonal armies. Just like the clone king was cloning himself and you know, randomizing a bit and creating all these combinations, cancer cells can also form their own clone armies. Just like, you know, um, in a battle you have some clones that die more, some clones that die less, just like that, cancer cells also try to become fitter over time. Just like the Clone King changed the settings 1% for randomization, in human beings, or in tumors, normal cells usually look like this. So chromosomes, those are chromosomes, and you're usually supposed to have two of each. But in cancer cells, they start having four, five, six chromosomes, and this is how cancer cells try to be fitter through these mutations. And survival of the fittest, I hope that reminds you, it's related to evolution, so how species evolve over time. Just like that, cancer cells are also able to learn and adapt. They're able to evolve. So if you look at this tree, this is made of cancer cells. And you can see how we've marked different armies that exist in one tumor. These kind of tumors can be really hard to treat. And the settings in this case look like this, or they start looking like this. It looks really complicated. So this is where computational biologists come in. We are something like Karl Heinz von Mainz. <laughs> instead, instead of wearing armor, we are in hoodies, still drinking beer, sitting behind a computer, so our eyesight isn't that good, and we probably don't look this happy at 9 a.m. And this image is exactly how my PhD supervisor looks like. <laughs> Cancer cells, clone settings come in various forms, so DNA changes is just one of them. You can also study how different tumors in the same body could have different clone armies. After treatment, if the cancer or the tumor comes back, it could also have a different composition of these clones. If we can study all these changes and we can track how these clones evolve over time, we are able to understand how tumors evolve into subclone armies which helps us treat patients according to their unique tumor profile, and also we're able to better predict how a patient can react to a certain treatment. And this is why I hope with this talk, you better understand what I'm working on and not just sitting and asking ChatGPT for code, code write-ups. And yeah, that's all from me, so thank you so much.